Hey everyone, welcome to Tech Woman Talk. August is Women's Month, so we'll be showcasing some of the amazing women in our tech industry. Today, we're chatting to tech journalist, Claire Mathis. Welcome, Claire. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Thank you for having it's me. It's such a pleasure to have you. Claire, paint me a picture of you at 12 years old. What were you like, and how did we get to the person sitting in front of us today? So, 12 years old, you mean like yesterday? <laughs> uh, yesterday, maybe a little bit earlier than that. <laughs> 12 years old was so long ago, I don't think I can remember. But, let's just, okay, so let's think about it. When I was younger, um, I was maybe a bit cheeky. Uh, I think I was cute, but maybe people wanted to give me a big slap. I don't uh, know. I think <laughs> cute. Uh, you can stay. <laughs> you can stay. Um, but yeah, no. Um, I was inquisitive, always always trying to learn. Maybe a bit nosy. Maybe a bit too nosy. Um, and I just yeah, I just always interested in things. Always wanting to know about people. Um, and that's just who I was. Interested. Very very interesting. <laughs> now tell me why tech. And also, why cars? Okay, so tech is, oh, it's a broad topic for it's me to get broad. into. Yes, yeah. it is. And um, I suppose I always liken it to the fact, or I always talk about the fact that I am an engineer's daughter and I grew up on my dad's, I mean, I grew up on um, building sites and that kind of thing. And, you know, working, working with my dad or following him around, I was always taking things apart with him, always in his workshop playing with tools and always being screamed at to leave things alone. I mean, he had this very German, very heavy German accent, which was also hysterical to have him screaming at you Especially at the same time. So and an only child, so you could just like, you know, big brown eyes at him and, and he just like it would be everything would just be fine. But I think the interest came from figuring out how things worked and, and that kind of thing. But I didn't I wasn't necessarily tech is something I fell into. Um, I finished uni when I finished university, I had um, studied sociology and journalism. And um, one of the first jobs that I'd found was actually through a colleague I was working with. She was into mining. And wow. yeah, one <laughs> of the jobs I, she, she put me forward for, they were looking for a junior journalist on like a forestry and timber magazine. And I was looking for work and, uh, and you want to experience. I didn't want to work in like a fashion magazine, even though I was into fashion. Um, I didn't want to work in that kind of like clack clack um, environment. I didn't yeah. want to be part of the lipstick, hair, eyeliner. I wanted to be Definitely. down on the ground, you know, doing all of that kind of thing. And um, I mean, you, you watch Devil Wears Prada and you realize the fashion industry is very important. <laughs> but that's not the industry I wanted to be Absolutely. in. I wanted to be in something a bit different. So Something a bit more challenging. Something just different. I, I think that's always what I've been. I've always just done just not gone the same route as everyone else. Um, so I ended up in forestry and, and you do, I mean, I was, I, I tell my friends, my family, my husband all the time. I mean, I was driving um, weird chopping trucks and I've, I've driven trucks around racetracks, just to, like oh, huge wow. trucks around racetracks that just for so testing fun. things. So much fun. <laughs> and um, um, been in forests cutting down trees, um, had to review wood chippers. I've been on a huge ship that was a wood chipper at that stage as well. Jeez. Huge. I mean, it took like it, the, the tour of the ship was like five and a half hours or something like <laughs> that. So it, I mean, I don't even remember half of it because there was just so much to learn. So, I mean, that was my first job for a couple of years and I just think I've always been I mean I hate to say male dominated but those yeah. were male dominated industries and you, you you hardly saw uh, even though the team were all women you hardly saw you know the women out uh, <laughs> in in the in factories the field, yes. in the factories chipping things it was always yes. the wives baking you cookies but still Absolutely. it was that kind of environment yeah. so I ended up there then I ended up in architecture which again you know, the interior design part was a lot of women, but at that stage, there were still only men, mainly as architects. And again, it was just male dominated. And again, it was just um, structures, buildings, you know, that it was just, I just find m like the career path that I've chosen or the career path that I ended up choosing. Yeah, right. Because you do, as a journalist, you get to take on subjects that aren't necessarily your subjects. You just learn about that's things right. that are the, b and you're there to just convey a message. And I think, and, yeah. and that's what's always been interesting for me. I've just taken other people's topics, 
reworked them and tried to make them interesting for other people. So um, architecture was a bit difficult because um, <laughs> the architects are always better writers than you are. Okay. <laughs> so that was a bit of a tough one. From but a I journalist? Ju- yeah, no, they <laughs> always know better. I suppose they put um, plans together and they put, you know, they have to it's put proposals together. Think, yes. Yeah. So they know they know specifically how to word it. But if I'm writing it for somebody who wants to, uh, uh, for for the layman to understand, they're not going to understand all the architectural yeah, terms. So, yeah, and, th- and that's where I ended up. And I've done a bit of radio. Um, we worked, I worked in shopping and, and building and things like that. I've worked in a stationery. And then I did, I ended up at IT Web as a sub-editor. And um, as a sub, you just really learn, you're just really checking the work and, and checking that sentences make sense and you've got names spelled correctly and things, you know, and, and just, yeah. And I found it really interesting. I started, you know, I st- one of the first stories I wrote was about Poppy. I mean, and that was years ago. Jeez. That was in 2014, I think, oh, when wow. it first was announced and first looked into. And, and yeah, I, f- I just, I, f- I really feel like I fell into the topic of tech. Um, but I've always had an interest. I still remember at university taking Nokia phones apart um, because I didn't like the cover I had on a specific <laughs> Nokia phone. So I remember taking it apart, um, reworking it. Uh, I had an 8110. I remember reworking a different kind of cover and putting that on. And then not starting a business, but I remember doing it for other people because at that stage you didn't have the clip-on, clip-off phones. Right. And I think I'm aging myself a little bit here. But I <laughs> used to do all those kinds not of things all. for people. <laughs> so, yeah, I did just t- just those that it was always fun for me to do things, take them on. And I, like I was tra- telling you earlier, I've always yeah. loved to take things apart. Um, I'm not the best at putting <laughs> things back together. Um, I'm okay, but I think I get a bit bored. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of like, I'll finish and that later. You kind of <laughs> come see back what to you wanted to see <laughs> you know? now. You can move on. Exactly that. Yeah. Exactly <laughs> that. So that's pretty much my career. And that's how I fell into tech. And, I, and I'm always grateful for to IT Web that they gave me that opportunity yeah. and, and um kind of put me on this path because it's obviously always something I've been interested in and and this is where I've ended up yeah they just gave me and they they really pushed me in the because as a sub you don't necessarily get to write but when they they offered me more writing they offered me you know that I I ended up writing on brainstorm I ended up having a small little part of a magazine that was my own those kinds of things so they were very you know encouraging and that kind of thing and at that stage I felt like um the reason I left them, I, I felt like I wasn't speak. I could have spoken more to consumers. I do feel right. tech is very intimidating. It I is. find it intimidating. It um, and sometimes I feel like, okay, we need people to, I, I don't want to say simplify it because it, I don't, I think it can be quite simple. Um, but we need people to make it more accessible. And I'm hoping that that's what I'm here for. I'm hoping that I can be the person to be, to, to be asked questions and people come to me and say, what is this? How do I do this? How can I do this? And I can, I might not have the answer right there and then, but I can be like, okay, let me have a look at it. Let me figure it out for you. Yeah. Okay, there's no hope. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> or, okay, let's try and figure this out kind of thing. So that's that's who I want to be. I don't necessarily want to be the expert. Yeah, And exactly. I've never claimed to be the expert, yeah, exactly. but I like being able to to move things around for people and try and just, you know, we all... I, I like to jump in on things and be like, okay, let's try and figure this out together. You yeah, because I must be honest, um, you opening, physically opening things is not something I personally have had an interest in. Right. So the fact that you've just done that has already kind of pushed you to where, to where you are today. Mm. So I've changed a gearbox on a car as well. Oh, so that wow. <laughs> is there anything an old car. <laughs> no, and, incredible. and thank God, I, re- and thank God I, I also lost interest in that. So <laughs> the, the person I was working with, thank God, ended that project for me because <laughs> I was just, and, and I mean, brake pads wasn't such a big thing, but I did, I did that as well. But like uh, the, the gearbox thing, I was oh just yeah. like, this is interesting and I'm done now. I've seen what I need to see. And, yeah. I, and, and, and thank, God the, yeah. <laughs> thank God the person I was working with at that stage was like, okay, I have to finish this because I need a car. <laughs> so anyway, but anyway. So then what brought about the name Gadget Girl? Oh, um, I kind of fell into it because I've always been an Inspector Gadget fan and Go Go Gadget Go and all that kind of thing. And um, I really... N- I. W- when I came up with it a couple of years ago, I was adamant that I'm not a girl because I'm not a girl, I'm a woman. And um, turns out that there actually is a superhero out there, a comic 
book character called Gadget Gal. And um, I didn't know that when I started it. So the whole, r r somebody then came to me and said, you do know that there's a Gadget Gal. So unfortunately, <laughs> at that stage, I'd already started the whole Gadget Gal thing. But and that's it had already caught on. That's, yeah, unfortunately, people were already like, Gadget Gal. <laughs> so I'm um, too late to change it at that stage. But I love it. And I like being I known as Gadget Gal because I feel like that's what I am. I just like to get yes. my hands on things and get in there and figure things out. So that's yeah. who I am. Yeah. So then what kind of challenges have you experienced as a woman in this industry? Um, there, obviously there are challenges. You sometimes are maybe treated as a bit of a dummy and I have always used that to my advantage. Um, maybe it's, you know, I, I maybe should be, um, maybe I should have stood up for the, the cause more and I maybe, you know, in hindsight should have said, don't speak to me like that. And I do do that now. I, I have had, I have been passed over for jobs because um, it's been assumed that a man knows more than I do. Uh, I recently, even a couple of months ago, um, um, I was passed over for a job and there, wa there wasn't like an interview process or anything. Somebody else just got the job because it was assumed that he knew more than I did. And then those kinds of things. And it's, it's hurtful because I feel like going, but I can show, I can prove to you what I've done. I can show yeah. you what I know. I can show you, you know, it's, it's not about that. And um, those those kinds of things I, sh I should be and and in this case I stood up for the cause in that case yeah. but I have I must say I have been you know you know touched inappropriately or you know giggled at or somebody said something yeah. funny and you just kind of ha ah, because it's just awkward at that stage yeah. do I really want to be making Make things scene. uncomfortable making a scene those yeah. kinds of things just because I think you do now I'm angry at myself but at that stage you're a young girl in a very awkward position do you really want to be you know uh, you just just get on with it and yeah you kind of just go with it I think you do because you just need to get the job done and ultimately it's just about proving yourself and I feel sorry for people yeah um I, uh, I must say you know with women's month coming up now there's still you still get hate I mean I constantly get hate online um Jeez. oh the inbox stuff that I get all the time is hysterical. And I mean, the comments on my physique and, you know, that I'm too fat or I'm too this or I'm too that. And I just think like, I'm, I'm not, that's, you know, yeah. and I'm too dumb. That's another one that always, and I'm like, I know that. That's why I'm here because I want to learn about what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> like, please, you know. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's about you reviewing tech. It's not about what you physically look like. I don't have to explain myself no, to you anyone. you don't actually <laughs> need to explain yourself. And ah. what you do is really great. And, I, and you, you know, you've got a long, a big following as well. So, mm. Yeah, but y the thing is, I just, you know, it needs to be known that everybody's going through things. Yes. You know, um, health issues. We've all faced health issues. We've all got, I you know, job um, problems or, or, or <laughs> everybody's overworked. Time. Everybody's got money issues. Everybody's got things yeah. going on. And I just feel like, you know, the whole thing about being kind. And, and, and I must say there, there will probably be people that I have maybe treated unfairly in the past. And I'm if, if somebody came to me and said, you did this to me years ago, I, I would profusely apologize because I probably didn't mean it in that yeah. sense or I might have had an off day or anything like that. And I, I also, I mean, I hold on to things that people maybe have done to me. And I just, you know, those are the th sort of things where um, you might have just had an off day and those are the challenges that I think we, we often face. You know, yeah. people are, uh, you know, I, I, I often talk about this cancel culture that we, we seem to be facing at the moment. I don't, I think people make mistakes. The person I was five years ago, the person I was 10 years ago is not the person I am oh today. Yes. And Ever I also changing. think we need to learn, please, you know, educate me on what I'm saying wrong. Let's have an open discussion. Like, maybe I come from a place of privilege sure but like you know let's talk about these things yes. let's engage it's not these are the kind we this is if if anything if 2020 and 2021 have taught us anything we need to have open discussions and not just cancel out everyone and everything exactly. and th those are I'm off topic here but it's anyway <laughs> it's all these about are the communication kind of at the end of the day so mm. you're absolutely spot and on and I do anyway. think we need to be a bit I mean it's, it's I mean it's done to death we do need to be a bit kinder to each other but you know, that's, it's the truth. It is, it is the truth, you know. So what advice would you give then to, to, to a, a woman wanting to go into this type of industry? What, what advice or recommendations would you give? Look, I think you will, 
in 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 any industry, whether you're a man, a woman, anything, I think you will come up against to I you know, I sit and question why wasn't I chosen for something? Why didn't I get this? Why is this person doing better than me? But the thing is I am a person that applauds people, that, you know, a lot of my friends are doing really well especially my colleagues are doing really well and I, I really am happy for them because the better they're doing the more likely it is that I will do well as well exactly. and I, I do really believe in raising other people up and and making because your time to shine will come you know Absolutely. and then that kind of thing I think if you're starting out in this industry you really do need to believe in what you've got to offer you've got to believe and you will you will have times where you think what am I doing here <laughs> What you know, and and people sending you things. What what are you, you know? You're dumb. You're this. You're that. Like all yeah. oh, these people are so right. But you want to hide under. But you you want to hide under your covers. You do. You just have to be a bit more resilient, and you you have to keep going. You know, sometimes the the gigs aren't coming your way. Sometimes the brands forget to. It happens. You get left yeah. off a PR list or things like that. Yeah. But you do. You just have to keep pulling yourself up. You know, pulling your socks up and keep going. And mm -hmm. and that's the thing. I think if, if somebody was starting out in this industry, um, I think you'd have to be resilient. I know. I think you'd also. I, I think maybe um, the the maybe be a bit more humble as well. I think you you have to remember where you're starting. You can't come in too cocky, guns blazing. I'm this. I'm that. Da 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 da. Yes, I, I think you know we all happen. had to pay our dues yes, <laughs> to get here, and I still feel like I'm still, you know. <laughs> but I think, <laughs> I think you know, sometimes we've just got to remember that y you do have something good going on and you do have something to offer. And obviously you wouldn't be here unless you wanted to be here. And that's the point, you know. Absolutely. Is there a piece of tech possibly that's coming out that you've got wind of or anything like that that you've kind of got a big excitement for currently? Well, um, the tech at the moment, like I know there's a lot of phones coming out at the moment and phones at the moment are a little bit boring for me. I, I feel like nothing's well, making... Well, you've taken enough of them apart. Oh, already, yeah, right? no, <laughs> <laughs> they're, a, they're a bit, I mean, they're not boring, but like everything's just like a little bit, everything's just a little bit, nah, a little bit better. Um, yes. I mean, this year we've had a few cool phones come out. Um, I know the Fold's coming out soon, which I'm quite excited to see uh -huh. what, you're always excited to see what happens and then when it comes, you're kind of like, um, <laughs> but I must admit, um, I've bought a whole bunch of equipment to set up a podcast, so I'm really excited to do that. Right. Um, but it's just because I have, you know, I've bought equipment to set up, um, uh, you to, to start YouTube and I, I've, I've done a little bit of that and I've dabbled, so to speak, and, and I write and all that kind of thing. But we've, you know, I've, I've bought a microphone, I've bought the podcast, a pro and then that kind of thing. And, and I'm ready to learn how to podcast or how to set up a good podcast, not, you know, I mean, we did, I did a story for Popular Mechanics on how to set up your podcast from wh when you're a beginner to when you're a pro, Advanced. but I just haven't yeah, like jumped on it myself, even though I'm always right in there first yeah. thing. I think it's different when you're trying to like set up something yourself. It's, yes. it's quite daunting you know it is yeah so that's that's the one thing that i am excited to start is is my podcast yeah so we're looking forward to you starting your own vlog podcast <laughs> I actually we'll that'll be great vlogging. but that'll be the next move for you right yeah i, I mean, think it's natural transition yeah, really natural yeah transition yeah for you, yes all right well we're going to go into a couple of fun questions for you okay now, uh -oh. we've been a little bit serious and let's keep it light-hearted <coughs> If you were an animal for 24 hours, what would you be? If I was an animal, <laughs> it's tough. Um, I'd like to be a dog. I'm torn. I'm torn because I'd <laughs> like to be a horse and just like run around all day, every day and just kick off Large and go wild. And proud just, and just run around my paddock all day. <laughs> but then I also know people who have horses that don't do that, who right. just stand and eat, which <laughs> also would work for me. Um, and then I know <laughs> I'd love to be a dog because you would just lie around Eat. Would you like to be a dog in your home? I'd love to be a dog in my home. Just uh -huh. lie around, eat and fart all day. Fantastic. So good. Just yes, lie on the yes. bed <laughs> and not have life. to listen. <laughs> as soon as you get told to get off the bed, I would not have to listen <laughs> to that either. <laughs> Just look at you like you're mad. <laughs> Excuse me, who are you talking to? <laughs> kind of no, thing. I beg great. your pardon? Yeah. Oh, no, not you. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> are you an early bird or a night owl? Oh, it depends. 
You I'm stay up late watching movies. No, I stay up late falling asleep to movies. That's oh, the thing. Oh, I'm yeah. as well. Yeah, we... <laughs> Um, All good intentions. My husband always jokes because he'll start a question. He'll uh, he'll say to me, I'll ask him a question like, do you have this meeting tomorrow? And then he'll, he'll <laughs> answer me and then I'll be like, what's wrong with you? Why are you waking me up? <laughs> and then I'll start like screaming at him and he's like, but you just asked me this <laughs> question. So literally between asking a question and him, him answering it, I've fallen You're asleep out. already. So um, I it depends. Sometimes I, I can stay up and... and be working or watching TV or whatever I need to do, but I, I think I'm the early bird. I like getting up early, getting stuff done. Yeah. Like I'm a Monday person. I don't know what it is about Mondays. It just feels like fresh start. Let's go. Boom, boom, boom. And then that is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday messed me up mm. a little bit because it was. Today feels like Monday. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <God>, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. And then yeah. Claire, are you a fan of sports? Do you watch sports? What sport? What sport? Yeah, Any I had sport. No, no mm, sport. No. Did you do sports as a young when you were in school no. and that kind of thing? No, I we played goal. we we played tennis. I mean, okay. we did tennis and football and things like that at school, which was fun. But I'm not like, what's rugby? And I know everyone's gonna freak out when I say <laughs> that. But I don't understand it. The cricket thing, I don't understand. <laughs> the running up and down a bald patch of grass. I just what what are you doing? I don't get it. But um, I'm a dancer, so I teach dancing. I have. Okay. I'm like two qualifications away from being an international na in international examiner. Wow. Yeah. So I'm. I'm so I haven't finished that. So. Okay. Yeah, but so we're getting there. You still get going yeah. So with ballet your tap. Hobby? Yeah. It's it it is a hobby, but um, it started becoming a real job, and I think people when people don't share their passion for it, and you know, the the problem maybe is as well. I grew up. And dancing was like an occupational thing. You it know, is. you were dancing to become a dancer. Yes. And now it's just for fun. And you kind of like, I don't teach it for fun. <laughs> I teach it so you can dance, you know. <laughs> you don't come here to have fun. You come here to dance, you know. Yeah. You come here to become good. No, but um, yeah, so that's that's one of the things that I, you, I haven't been teaching for a while. I mean, COVID's been a bit tough. Yeah, so I tough decided to take a bit of a break. And that's been, yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. So then how do you unwind from a stressful day? I mean, okay, I say stressful day. Your kind of stressful day. My kind of stressful <laughs> day. The thing is, stressful for me is it's not, the work that I do is not stressful. Um, it's a lot of fun. We, we, I think the people that you deal with can be a bit stressful sometimes yeah. because, uh, and I'm sure a lot of people are experiencing this. Um, you're expected to give a lot more than you can at the moment. Um, yeah. But unwinding is, you know, Going to the gym is always good. A dance class is always a lot oh, of fun. Yes. Bit of music's always good. We've just started. Um, we've just um, up downloaded BritBox, so that's quite a lot of. We like a good, good, good bit of Eng British crime stuff. So that's mm -hmm. always good. Um, and yeah, a bit of Netflix or Showmax or something like that's always a lot of fun. Yeah, enjoying the the. Uh, uh, but my my problem is I didn't want to become one of these people that just watch TV all the time, and I think oh. that is where this is heading you know <laughs> like there's a lot of those have a lot go of that home happening. and watch tv you yeah. know <laughs> that kind of person but anyway. actually a topic of conversation is there anything good on netflix um <laughs> there's a few good things on netflix actually but my problem with netflix at the moment is it's all foreign so yeah i find that as well <laughs> yeah so it's also limited a bit so i read for a living and now i have to read my tv programs <laughs> as well so i'm having a bit of a problem a bit there. of a challenge there yeah <laughs> Claire, it has been an absolute honor and pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. If you want to share your social handles with us that anybody watching can follow you. Okay. Um, you can get me on Instagram at Claire Petra. Uh, you can find me on gadgetgirl.com is my site. Right. And then I think you can find me Claire Petra um, on TikTok as well and on Twitter as well. Fabulous. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you for having much. me. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Claire.